Hey friend, are you a leader who is career focused, goal driven, and possess a lifelong learner mentality? Do you dream about achieving your goals and spend hours Googling how to's and gurus? Does a side effect of your awesome, might I add, personality include perfectionism, the dreaded imposter syndrome, and the ever present fear of failure? Well, you've landed in the right place. We just became virtual BFFs. I'm Erin Deal, the founder of the improv training company Improve It and a recovering perfectionist turned fail fluencer. Inspired by the improv rule, there are no mistakes, only gifts. This podcast is the creative outlet you need to not only motivate you, but the people that you lead. Through interviews with corporate leaders, entrepreneurs, and even comedians, you'll walk away becoming a more empathetic boss by realizing that failure is a part of the journey and you must fail in order to improve. In the scene of life, we all have our own unique gifts that we bring to the world, and it is our mistakes that help to unwrap them. Welcome to Failed It. Hey, Failed It fam, I wanted to start this show as your recovering perfectionist turned failfluencer virtual BFF and let you know that I am letting go today of control of all things perfection. That's right. We had some technical difficulties during the recording of this show, and it is such an important and special show to me. You're going to hear from Dr. Angie Belsos of Bios Fertility. She is the woman who essentially made me a mother and helped me through my IVF and fertility journey. There was, like I said, some technical difficulties, so bear with us, but there is so much great information here for you. I'm letting go. Let's do this. Welcome, my Failed It fam. Failed It fam, today's guest is a woman who is near and dear to my heart. I would say I would do anything for her, really anything, like give her my firstborn, but truly, she gave me mine. I would like to welcome to the show, Dr. Angie Belso. <laughs> Here we are. Here we are. This is a dream come true for me. I am Aww. so excited to have you here and honored. And I'm going to start by reading just a quick bio. Quick bio. You have so many accolades. So I'm going to sum them up for the Failed It family. That's what we call our audience, the Failed It fam. So Dr. Angie Belsos is the CEO and Chief Medical Officer of Vios Fertility Institute. She is a board certified in obstetrics and gynecology and in reproductive and chronology and infertility, practicing medicine since 1991. Dr. Belsos complete yes, that deserves a woo. <laughs> Dr. Belsos completed her residency in obstetrics and gynecology at Loyola University in 1995, followed by a fellowship in REI at Washington University in St. Louis, Missouri, completed in 1997. Dr. Belsos is also the Clinical Research Division Director of VIOS and participates in a number of research projects and scientific publications. She has received numerous awards in teaching and has been honored as top doctor from Castle Connolly for several years. She is a popular speaker both nationally and internationally and a frequent media resource on the topic of infertility. Dr. Belsos is the executive chairperson chairperson for the Midwest Reproductive Symposium International, an international conference of fertility experts. Okay, just a Ooh. few things on the resume. <laughs> You're so funny. You're so Thank funny. You. I'm so honored to have you here. And it is my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Oh my God. Well, we're if you are new to the failed it fam if you go back to episode 49 you will be able to hear this infertility journey that i went on and why this woman is so special to me and to so many other women i want to ask this question and then i have another i have a follow up question do you know how many babies you have actually brought into the world do you know the number just from you I um, tried to count at one point um, how many, and we got to like 
five to 7,000, something like that a few years ago. So I'm going to have to like recalculate. Oh my God, you have to. It's like a guest, but it is pretty amazing. It's so fantastic. I literally wouldn't be a mother. Oh, really? I wouldn't. I would not. Well, it's really, um, you know, such a gift to have met you and your husband and be part of your, your story. And, and thank you for, for allowing that. Of course. And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit, but I want to, I want to start with some fun. We're going to ease in. Okay, yeah. Angie. So what's, <laughs> we're going to ease in. So what's one fact about you? We just read this awesome bio. What's one fact that we couldn't find out about you from your resume, your bio, your LinkedIn, all the profesh things. What's a fun fact? I would say that um, in the the bio that you get on the medical side, I um, used to have a dance troupe and I danced with, um, you know, in my past life, I was a performer. So I did studied voice and theater and I danced with the National Dance Troupe of Greece for a year. And um, and I was the master instructor of my dance troupe in Ann Arbor for many years. And um and so here you here we are. I still love to dance. Okay. This is a fact I wish I knew three years ago. Uh, do you know I was a dancer? And also I lived in Michigan for high school. So we're and this makes a lot of sense because now I'm seeing a lot of these dance moves, Angie. Okay. Uh-huh. On TikTok <laughs> and Instagram. It's true. So this is something, this is something that's happened like in the past year. You've really kind of jumped into this digital space. You're a doctor, educator, speaker. You, you're a mother of four, right? Right. Mother of four. Yes. Oh my God. And um, yeah, different ages too. They they span from a couple in college to um, the little one is six in kindergarten. God bless you. <laughs> when I think my day is stressful with a toddler, I, I think oh. about. You, I'm like, holy crap. Well, okay, I want to forget that piece. Forget that piece. That's <laughs> amazing. But I want to know, how did this TikTok, you and I were kind of talking about it before we started recording. How did this happen? How did this, because you were like getting so many people finding you and finding bios from TikTok and social media. Well, we were um, looking at just how much social media, I think, has evolved over the last, I would say, three to five years. You know, most of our patients would find us, you know, by a Google search or um, using that kind of interplay between a doctor and maybe uh, the OBGYN doctor when people would, would go for their pap smear and they would say, well, I'm trying to get pregnant and the doctor would refer. Like that's a mainstay of how people find a fertility expert. And now um, I think Instagram and Facebook um, are very powerful ways direct to consumer, if you will, where you're talking to patients through their phone and through their computers and really trying to normalize, I think, some of these very delicate topics. We were saying that some of the stuff we talk about, you know, people share in their first meeting with me, things they don't ever really talk about with their friends. They may not have even ever said them out loud to their spouse. And here we are diving deep into the intimate area and sometimes a painful area uh, for some couples and many different stories. But um, I think that, you know, we do have this opportunity in social media to empower and to educate and to really just kind of loosen it up a little bit so people can can hear some of the opportunities to become parents. I love that. And I know you use a little uh, levity, if you will, a little fun, which is my jam. And I love that that's helped kind of soften the conversation when people come in to meet you. Because I, as a person who went through infertility, know that it's an emotional and physical journey, but it's a lot of emotions before you even walk in the door to your office. So to have that connection with you in such a fun way, I think is from the beginning a really cool thing. Okay. 
So I just like to keep it real for the failed it fam. So Angie, we just had a huge technical fail and now we're back. We're, we're doing it in a different location and then on a different platform. So you're patient and I love you for it. Thank you. Oh my gosh. We are all enjoying all the technology that now is like in our face on a daily basis. So we're, we're good living and learning. That's it. That is it. Okay. Well, so we, we are now, you know, realizing you are this TikTok star. You are, you know, finding people from all over. Have you found anybody who's not in Chicago? Well, I know you have so many different locations now, but are you finding people who are from just all over the place, finding you through social media? Oh, yeah. From all over the country and world, we have people um, watching from all different continents and they are um, flying over a lot of clinics to uh, get to Vios. And it's really interesting how many people you can reach through these um, these wavelengths, you know? This is so cool. I'm so, honestly... It's amazing. It's so, it really is. And I mean, I... So I started with your practice, I think, 2018, if I go back. And just even thinking, then I don't even remember, like you had a social presence, but you have like turned it up <laughs> since then. And it is so fun. I love it. When I see a video in the in the uh, actual like transfer room, I'm like, been there, done that, got a kid, you know, not a t-shirt, mm-hmm. a kid from it. Um, <laughs> so we're talking about this whole infertility awareness week. And I shared my infertility journey on a show, like I mentioned a couple weeks ago. And I want you, if you haven't listened to it, go back to episode 49. We'll link to it in the show notes. And I said this in the upfront of the show, but you really are the reason I am a mom. And you took a chance and you believed in my and John's story. And this was the first time in my personal infertility journey that I felt seen, I felt heard. And I know that this isn't something that, you know, you have to work on. This is ingrained in Dr. Angie Bell. So this is who you are. So why do you think this notion of empathy is so important when it came to cultivating a team and building bios? Why is that so important? People ask um, about culture, and I think that it starts at the very top and it goes all the way through the sides of the organization laterally and vertically. But culture is very delicate and it must be very intentional. Um, you know, we talk about failed it and the, the concept as women leaders, um, corporate America, but you can be owning your own own business. You might be doing something incredible um, in your business and in your world. But I think uh, when we look at these opportunities to um, be successful in our careers, and you talk about empathy and compassion, but I think it requires three very different dimensions. Number one is humility and being humble. Uh, ironically, the other side of that is being very confident. And in the midst, the other third dimension is kindness. Mm -hmm. So I think if you can combine those three forces, which are seemingly very different, but very, very tied together, those allow for leadership to take new dimensions. And what I feel you get from your team is a culture where there is empathy and support of our customer, which is a patient um, trying at some point now or maybe in the future to have a family. And you need people to you know, come to work, not just for the money, but because they really believe in your mission of and your purpose. Um, that is so true. And I, I spoke about this in the show that I did on my own, but I really felt that in every single step of the way, you can tell that your process is really thoughtful. And it's so, it's just, it was perfect, Angie. It was so, I'm, thank uh, you for saying that. No, it was. I mean, I'm not just saying it because you're here. I mean it from the, like, I will tell anyone who I know how I was treated at Bios, which was with the utmost care, 
And I could tell too, I remember, um, so there was a long journey to find you and lots of calls to many clinics to try to find somebody to help us. And Tanisha, is that right? Your at reception? Yes, Talisha is still Talisha. there. Talisha, okay. She was just from the moment I talked to her on the phone, I was like, there's something different about this place. And she was so kind and so empathetic. She, what is her exact title? Do you know what it is? She is in the new patient call center and she helps, um, you know, ambassador people into our practice. Okay. She's the perfect person for that job. I mean, she she, is so lovely. Oh my God. I was like drawn to her. And um, so from her first initial call and then getting in to see you and just, I'll never forget it. We walked in and it just felt so homey. You had chips and, and like little granola bars and waters in the waiting room. And then you go to the consult room and it just felt really nice with couches and even more like coffee with pure eggs in your room. And then I'll remember from that first meeting all the way through the process to the embryo transfer, you had a playlist. Okay. For the transfer, I think it was, it's Roberta. Is that right? Is, am Roberta, I yes. Our, our amazing <sighs> ultrasound tech that helps with our IVF procedures. Yes, oh she's my God. Good. She's so, <laughs> like, I'll never forget. I can never listen to Casey and Jojo all my life and not think <laughs> of that moment. Um, and then he gave us a little goodie bag filled with all kinds of cute things after the transfer. And I'll just never forget that experience. And the moment I felt, walking in your door in the moment, I found out I was pregnant, just all of the things that you did to make someone who is going through such a tough time in their life feel seen and heard. So I want to ask this, why do you think, of course, I, I, I mean, I, it's, it's not lip service. It is from the depth of my soul. Like I'm missing it. So let me ask you this. Why do you think it's so important to You've, so when I say all these things, I think of safe space. As soon as I walked in the door, it felt like a safe space. Yeah. So why do you think it's so important to create these safe spaces for not only internally, right, for your team and for the people who work at us, but for the people that you're serving? Why is that so important? I think you um, really touched on something so important. and hit the nail on the head that we do need um, when we're going through these um, times of medical care and people examining us and blood draws and all these things, you do want to make sure that you feel confident in the, the, the care that you're getting. And It is multidimensional. You know, you have a physician, but you may not see that physician at every visit. You have care providers that may be the blood draw person, the phlebotomist, the ultrasound tech, even that front desk and the people that answer the phone. Uh, We say you can hear a smile, you know, over the phone and people talk now about, you know, your, your eyes that you can see the smile with a mask on. But it is very important. And I think um, that as we talk about physician leaders and 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 in my world um, and corporate America, these these incredible uh, business people, men and women, you want to be when you're going through um, your own business development, thoughtful um, about what it looks like. There was a great article in the Harvard Business uh, Review about furniture and how it's positioned in a practice or in a in a place because where you put your furniture creates behavior and the behavior creates a culture. So we want to be very thoughtful that it's centric around who you are and what your mission is. So for us it it's really about and has to always start in the in, in the middle and at the end of their visit with us, it always has to be patient centric. Oh my gosh, I love that! And of course, it was thoughtful, and it was in the Harvard Review. Like, of course, of course, because I felt it. I mean, the moment we walked in the door, we were like, "This feels right," and that made such a difference. And we had gone through so much to get to you. So by the time we got to you, we were, you know, we had been 
what felt like drug through the mud and then, you know, mm-hmm. sort of like slept around a little bit. <laughs> That's an awful analogy. <laughs> you feel beaten up, you know, yeah. especially when you are with some um, practices where it's not, you know, it's not about you. It's right. about multiple you know, other attitudes, decision makers, stakeholders who suddenly on a whim decide that something could intervene in their mind or in their heart that puts a huge block in your road suddenly. And had they, that wasn't something that they thought of before, but that is um, where culture and, and misdirection and misfires can really compromise your experience and what you want to get out of something. So I think um, when you uh, keep things very clear, your why, why do you do what you do and your mission um, allows you to have clarity and as a business person, how you want things to, to look. And this is a delicate moment. It's such, it should be a romantic moment when you're having your, your, um, moment that you'll become pregnant. And so it shouldn't be clinical and it shouldn't be cold with a white room and a cold speculum. You know, it should be romantic and you should try to recreate a little bit of this very delicate and incredible miracle that's going to happen like Jackson, like is this this more like, is there anything more precious? And so you do want, all the senses as much as one can to kind of create something tender. Oh my God. I literally have tears in my eyes right now. Nobody can see this, but us, but it is so true. And it's, it's such a rewarding thing to think about. I'm sure for you, because it's, when I think of my journey, I, I don't care that it was outside of the box because you made it feel so special. So that's well, true. I mean that. So tears, tears are real. Hey, Failed It fam, do you have what the kids call Zoom fatigue? Are you sick of logging on Zoom and hearing things like, can you see my screen? Oh, you're muted. You're muted. And oh my gosh, I'm so sorry I'm late. Are you working from home in your bedroom slippers and business mullet like me, which I'm talking about wearing a business top and yoga pants on the bottom, feeling like it's Groundhog's Day every single day? Do you need some laughter, levity, and fun in your workday to change things up while remote? How about a laugh break? That's right. It's called Laugh Break, and it's Improvit's newest virtual offering. Laugh Breaks bring seasoned Chicago and Charlotte-based improvisers into your virtual conference call for a little taste of short-form improvisation. In each session, improvisers engage on live, on-the-spot games based on your team's laughter and suggestions. Now, whether your team needs a quick 15 minutes of laughter or a more substantial 30-minute break, Improve It has got your back. You can go to www.learntoimproveit.com backslash laugh break, or just click on the link in our show notes to book yours on demand today. Again, that's learntoimproveit.com backslash laugh break. Get ready to sit back, relax, and grab some giggles because we could all use a little laugh break right now. See you on the Zoom. Okay, so this wouldn't be the Failed It podcast. By the way, Failed It fam listening at home, this is our um, third technology round. We've had some mishaps that we're editing out just to give you a better listening experience, but we're all about failing it on this show. And um, Angie, I know you love some improv comedy. Now I know you have this dance and musical theater, but like what? I knew none of this before. Um, But one of the biggest rules is there are no mistakes, only gifts. And you are no stranger to improv. You've even hired Improve It for your team. I want to talk about in your personal experience, it could be professional, personally, what is one of the biggest quote unquote gifts that you've received or that's happened to you in the past couple of years and the lesson you learned from that? Um, thank you for making me think about, um, you know, some key moments that have led me to who I am as a um, founder, CEO, um, as a woman, uh, and, you know, different lessons we take from that. 
And I think one thing that I reflect on, and I was um, blessed to be um, allowed to man- be managing partner um, in my different uh, business and, and different opportunities and clinics. And there, um, I realized how delicate culture can be. And people uh, can take advantage of an opportunity and not realize how important it is to appreciate others. And I think that can be um, something that uh, both in all the relationships that can happen uh, that you work with. And those are colleagues and those are people that work for us. Um, we do think calling our the people that work with us, not necessarily just employees, but um, team members. Yeah. And it takes this whole, you know, group of people to deliver this service in a way that's consistent. And it is a little bit like world peace. Um, you know, it's something you continually try to refine. And I know some patients that have been with us may say, well, you know, this was an issue or that was an issue. And and they're real, um, you know, as people grow and, and companies get busy, I think you try to remember those core values and continually drive that appreciation for your team, remembering how important it is to educate our team members. And so I think there was a lot that I learned from my past that I brought forward. And um, I would say, number one, remember to keep the patient as the the focus. Um, When that doesn't happen, the wheels fall off because you start to make decisions about what's good for you and not what's good for um, the person you're here to serve. The second thing was that your relationships with your coworkers are um, also like a marriage uh, and they're your, your work spouses, if you will, and that you have to continually work on those relationships and respect each other and uh, listen to each other and what's important today and tomorrow for those team members. And finally, the third thing was something Nelson Mandela had said that, you know, the most powerful way to change the world is education and and that goes um, not only for ourselves, but also all the different layers of our team. You know, someone said, well, you know, this part of the team isn't that uh, relevant to the services we deliver. And I was like, you've got to be kidding. This is like one of the most important, although they may not be the person that's doing surgery, you know, people that are on the admin team are as important, you know, at delivering some of this um the services that we provide. Oh my God. Oh, see, and this is, not only do I find you just so refreshing from a medical standpoint, but I find you so refreshing from a leadership standpoint. You really see full picture, which I think isn't an, I don't want to call it an anomaly in the medical space, but you see so much. Thank you. Well, I, um, I appreciate that big compliment coming from you. And I do think that being an entrepreneur and being in business and being um, a servant uh, of medical care, and they do all coexist in a way that, you know, if you practice good medicine, the rest will sort itself out. But on the business side, um, you know, managing people and and experiences is um, something that we at Vios don't take lightly. And again, something that we continuously work on. Um, sometimes we miss the mark. Uh, and sometimes, and hopefully often, that feels uh, that the, the patient felt like she was well cared for in that or he. So those are really um, important driving forces. Yeah. And I will say this, I can tell you, because I didn't see you every visit, right? I saw a lot of your team and I can tell you without a doubt that they all adore you. And it shows with every, because you have all women staff, right? You have Greg, right? There are are a lot of women, that's for sure. Yes. Yes. So (laughs) we've got got some amazing men that are with us, but uh, mostly, um, you know, mostly women physician uh, and, uh, 
and a lot of women leaders in our organization. Which I love, as you know, improve it. Female, female founded and operated. Love the male facilitators, but also very true <laughs> to us. Um, so I want to ask this question because I could really feel that love from your team in everything that I saw. Would you, what would you say to a leader listening who wants to create this sort of, going back to this kind of notion of a safe space, what would you say to somebody listening who is a leader of a team? Maybe it's big, maybe it's small. What's the magic sauce? And you get, you did allude to this, but if you could pinpoint one thing that you think for yourself every day when you walk in, no matter what office you're in, what would that magic sauce be? I think for um, for those uh, listening in this um, family of failed it, that the secret sauce is what I had kind of alluded to before. There's a great book called Conscious Leadership um, by the gentleman who uh, started and founded Whole Foods, but it is something where you are a leader but it comes with humility and um, and kindness, those those elements together. I love it. And we're going to link to that book in the show notes for everybody listening here too. Now, this is sort of off topic, but I, I know a lot of women who have asked about my own experience, but I want to ask, what would you say to a woman who's listening today or male, whoever, a family who is listening and they think they're failing it because they're having to go through something like IVF or some type of infertility journey. What would, what would be something that you would say to them today that could help them just understand that they're not alone? No matter where you're at in this journey, it might be in the beginning, um, it might be almost there, you might be in the midst of an IVF cycle or two or three. But my one message to you is don't give up. If this is important to you and you dream of having uh, a family, then know that there are so many options for you and there's so much technology and it's a, an amazing mix of medicine and science and the miracle of life. And they all come together to help us help you. So you know, be exploring your options and don't give up. Don't lose hope. I love that. Oh my God. I, and when you just spoke, I was teary again. I'm like, why is this happening again? Oh, but I, I no, it's so special <laughs> because I hope somebody listening today will take that and it will resonate because yeah. I, I felt so alone and I didn't after I, I felt like a number and a, and a big sea of people who I didn't know were going through the same thing, but I felt so empowered after I went to your practice and I'm so grateful every single Me day. Too. I Thank really you. am. Uh, okay. So I have this question. This is a fun one. What would you say your mantra is or a particular quote that you use to motivate you? And it's, there's going to be a bonus point for you if it's in a hashtag. Hashtag life is for living. So that's that's my hashtag. You know, I sat um, struggling to make a big decision. Do I leave um, where I was and medical director and very stable and, you know, in a, in a good job? And do I jump and make Vios? And in the end, you know, you, you have to self-reflect when your shift doing that shift and pivot in your life. Um, but follow your heart. And and for me, it was like, you know, is this the time? Should I just stay where I'm at? But you have your whole life ahead of you. So the time is going to pass, whether you stay where you are, and that might be fantastic. Or if you're dreaming of something else, and you're not getting it where you are, man, rip it off, just go for it. And life is for living. Look in your heart, see what you want to do and jump in and give it your all wherever you are, whatever you're doing, give it your all. That's mm. all. Okay. Oh. Mm. I'm going to say, mm. and I'm going to, we're going to hashtag the crap out of that in this episode. Okay. Life is for living people. Listen up, Phil. I mean, 
Okay. This is why I love you because I feel like it's just always fun. Um, <laughs> let me ask you this too. What would you do even if you knew that you might fail? Um, I was thinking about that question, like just what could, what would you do? And I'm kind of doing it. Yeah. You know, that, I like that. I like I that. I was like, oh, that's such a canned answer. But I, I, um, you know, thought that exact question is how I approached it. I said, well, if I fail at this, well, we might have to move. Um, we might not be able to buy the things that we wanted or expected to buy. I was a waitress in college, so maybe the kids will have to help pay for their college. And you know what? That's not necessarily a bad thing um, because it gives you tenacity, teaches you a little bit of um, roll up your sleeves and get in there and, and balance out your life and use executive functioning skills when you have to figure out how do I get to my job and hockey and uh, my classroom. I, I, of course, want to provide, as we all do for our children. But I figured, you know what? The, this, is, um, this is up to me to win and it's up to me to fail. And if I'm willing to risk it, and some people are risk averse, um, I go back to, you know what? Worst case, you're going to be fine. And you know what? The Really, the only thing you're going to have to fear is fear itself. Just get her done. And you know what you need to do to be successful in your job. You're brilliant. You're amazing. You're smart. You're experienced. So don't be afraid of the future. Just jump in. And you know what? Failing is really important. Failing um, is uh, where you really learn. So uh, they, they are opportunities and I think um, you'll miss a hundred percent of the shots you never take, but you got to just shoot the puck. You know, you just got to go for it. So whatever you're thinking about, whether it be personal or professional, um, jump in. Oh my God. So many good little juicy chicken <laughs> nuggets in there. <laughs> get some dipping sauce, get all the nuggets. Of get them. some dipping sauce. You get are so funny. Sauce. I love it. Okay. This is the final thing, Angie. Okay. This is called our fail. Yeah. Lightning round. It's super fast. It's very fun. There's a little improv, a little thinking quickly on your feet. Okay. So no, every time I say improv, people are like, oh, it's just, you could just say a, a one word answer. So I'm going to ask you a series of questions and I want you to respond as fast as you can with only one word answers. And no, you can't fail. But if you say more than one word, I'm going to give you a Fail, yeah. Yeah, fail, yeah. Or an eek. We could do an eek. We could do an eek. Or fail, yeah. And then basically, it's just me firing questions at you in a rapid fire round. And you say one word answers. Are you ready? Ready. Here we go. Okay. One word to describe your early career. Fun. One word to describe where you're currently at in your career. Crazy. <laughs> One word to describe your future self. Energized. One word to describe your favorite boss. Brilliant. One word to describe your least favorite boss. Obstinate. One word to describe your parenting style. Compassionate. And one word to describe your dancing style. Mm. TikTok. I like the sound effects before that. Okay. And one word to describe this interview. Emotional. Oh, I would, I would, that snaps to that. Okay. So Angie, how can we find you? Tell everybody where they can see these fun TikToks, all the things, mm -hmm. or your website. How, how can somebody who needs your services find you and enjoy the joy that is Dr. Angie Belsos? Thank you for having me. My uh, website is biosfertility.com. And you can find me on Instagram, Angie Beltsos, B-E-L-T-S-O-S, -S, and TikTok the same. So thank you.
Thank you. We're going to link to all of that in the show notes. But I just want to thank you again for coming on the show thank today. You. Thank you so much for this honor and privilege to be on such an amazing podcast with such a brilliant woman. And um, it was it was awesome. Thank okay. you. Okay. Well, thank you. And I want to tell you, myself and family are living proof that what you do matters so much. Okay. Thank so you. you help create a life. You give me an even greater purpose when I wake up each day and John Jackson and I are forever grateful to you, the uh-huh. team and the mission of bias. So thank you thank so you. much. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Angie. All right. Fail the fam. Fail. Yeah. To you. Fail. Yeah. Hey friends, thanks for tuning in to Failed It. I am so happy you were along for the ride. If you enjoyed this show, please head on over to iTunes, leave us a five-star review and subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode. New episodes drop every Wednesday. Now, if you're really feeling today's show, please take a screenshot and tag me on Instagram at Keeping It Real Deal and share it to your stories so we can bring more people to the Failed It family. I'll see you next week, but I want to leave you with this thought. What will you fail at today and how will that help your future successful self? Think about it. I'm so proud of you and you are totally failing it. See you next time.